Hello, everyone, and I'd like to thank you for your time today and uh, checking out uh, the new offering. I'm Ray Haight, uh, newly minted retention coach at TCA and their uh, profitability program. So um, I'm excited to get started on this. I've got a real passion for it, and I've got a history in it. Um, at the end of this uh, presentation, there's going to be a couple of offerings that you're going to see on the screen that TCA has put together in an attempt to help the, each of your companies uh, turn the tide on the uh, turnover rates that are rampant amongst our membership and in the industry in general. Um, I will have been successful during this uh, short amount of time we're going to have together if I offer you and you recognize a new paradigm on turnover. Uh, I want to show you what's available to you, and I hope this whole experience uh, and your time uh, spent brings value to you. So let's get started. Um, I, uh, I've been around TCA for quite a while, I'm past chairman uh, of TCA, PTDI, uh, NATME, and a few others. Um, I started my career in transportation um, by driving a million miles over 10 years, accident-free, and I was the president and chief operating officer of a 300 truck fleet that had 200 owner operators and 100 company drivers, also was a, a shareholder in that business. So today's presentation, as I mentioned, is about offering a different paradigm to this whole issue. Um, but I do think I could have had alternative uh, titles rather than just turnover, because when you stem the tide of turnover, you become very safe. Uh, you know, carrier safety could have been a, a, a new title for this. The secret of carrier profitability. When you, when you stop turning drivers over to the extent that many of our carrier members have, then you become much more profitable. In our case, the carrier I ran, we doubled our offering ratio. And I'm going to offer you a different paradigm from basically the driver's perspective, from behind the wheel. And I know most of you have been behind the wheel, or a lot of you have, and I know a lot of other ones of you, um, you know, don't quite get that. But when you leave from being behind the wheel and get behind a desk, it does change things for you. It changes the whirlwind you live in, and it changes uh, just the way you look at things. So uh, I'm going to give you a retroactive look uh, at uh, how we turned our turnover from 120% to 20% over a two-year period. Basically, the program is built around that experience. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what goes on between the years of the leadership and uh, taking responsibility for how you got to where you're at. Um, you know, this is a step-by-step -step, uh, journey. Um, you know, it's, it's a step-by-step -step from taking you from being just a freight hauler into one that uh, di differentiates itself by being a strategic uh, advantage in the marketplace through your people. And it's the people that make that happen. And uh, we're going to try to stop disrupting families. I mean, every day drivers go home and tell uh, their family and their loved ones they don't have a job, whether they got fired or they quit, and we did, that happens far too often in our industry. There's no reason for it. So this is a, a, a holistic view of how this uh, should uh, be stemmed, and uh, you know you got to look at the whole thing. Uh, many valuable vendors at TC have great products uh, that address this issue, but if you put those products inside a good strong project plan um, then their products work uh, far better than if you just um, plug them into your business and hope then that in, uh, in and of itself will supply all the answers because typically it doesn't um, you know so we're going to uh, take a look at this uh, very detailed very granular um, this is, these are the things that we went through when we turned our turnover around from commitment all the way through to the mentoring progress uh, programs that we had, but uh, you know this. Uh, you know I bring this up because this is basically a retroactive plan uh, through something that's been uh, you know vetted through a real life situation. But it also over overlays very nicely into what else this is wrapped around, which is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And this is something here that is ingrained in all of us. It's been uh, around since, I believe, 1947. Abraham Maslow came up with this, and it's been a mainstay in psychology since that, since that time. Um, when we get to the base layer of the physical needs or in trucking the pay uh, rates, and we're satisfied that we're getting paid properly, then we move on to safety. You know, our, is our company safe? Are our terminal, terminals safe? Is the equipment safe? Um, are the shipping lanes I'm in safe? All of those things come to mind. Then from there, you go up into the motivators. 
is the bottom two are demotivators. If you don't have the pay rates right and you're an unsafe care, I'm going to tell you right now, it's, you know, it's easy to tell you why you've got turnover. Um, you have to nail those down. But the, the ones that are on top that are the motivators, they're the glue. That's the sticky parts. That's what makes drivers uh, rethink about the, the opportunity to go to another carrier because they can't always get those things. And they should. They should get those things. So uh, to get started, this is a seven-part program. It encompasses Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but it starts with a firm, building a firm foundation and it ends with what we call the circle of success, which is to keep doing the things that you have been doing to get your turnover under control and to ensure that you continue to drop that turnover number. But it really does start with commitment from senior managers, from the ownership, from the people uh, you know at the top of the food chain in your business and make sure that they're on track. They've got to be 100% committed to turning this uh, turnover number around. And then from there, it goes down to the employees. What's in it for me? You got to sell them. You got to make them understand why turnover is poison for the business and why it's got to get brought under control. So it involves everyone inside the walls, also involves your customers and your suppliers and your community. You know. And one of the things that uh, you've got to be wary of is that uh, change does scare people. So you've got to be patient with your folks and really uh, sell them on what has to be done. Um, but there's going to be some that may not get it. And if uh, they don't, after giving them lots of time, then you're going to have to cut bait on some of those. But we have teachings on all of these things in the program. But this is basically uh, that, that Maslow's Pyramid inverted. So it starts with a little wage, then it goes to safety and security, sense of belonging recognition for your contribution, and then what are the things that the company offers uh, so that I can be the professional that I know that I want to be. And again, it starts at the top. It's not an autocratic thing. You can't sit behind the desk and say, hey, don't leave us and go to another company. And it doesn't work that way. You got to get in the trenches. You got to talk to talk and walk to walk. You really got to get in there. Let people know this is a priority. If it's a priority for you as the leader, it will be a priority for your people. But you've got to be on site, be consistent. So again, back to the physical needs. Physical needs as it equates to trucking really means wages. Are you in line or out of line in the sector you're in, in the geographic location that you work and the lanes that you run? Where are you in that food chain? And if you're well below the medium average in that food chain, then likely you're gonna have a lot of turnover. And, you know, typically, you know, if you've only got the first couple of uh, levels of Maslow's mastered, then we are, you are, uh, delegated to being not much more than just the number, um, and it's monetary, completely monetary. But you got to know where you stand, and it's got to match up with your strategy. If you've got a growth strategy, obviously you want to be at the top of the wage market. If you've just got to sustain and you get this thing out of control, maybe you need medium and medium enough. If you're not concerned or you want to shrink your company, there's an easy way to do that. Just be way out of line with what the leaders are doing. It'll shrink on you. Um, and then you've got to, you know, obviously be competitive um, and, and match your company objectives. But you've also got to, uh, you know, really get on side with the people that have been with you a while. Um, drivers aren't particularly uh, happy when they've been with you for a number of years and you just hired somebody last week and they're making the same money they are. So we get into different ideas of how you do that, how you differentiate between your more experienced drivers and your junior drivers and still be uh, competitive. Um, you know, it's important to get this right. Um, and a lot of companies don't get this right. And they're the companies got 100, 150 or more turnover um, because they just don't pay attention to what the market's doing. Of course, they're shrinking now because there just isn't an influx of new drivers to backfill those high turnover numbers. Um, and second of all is the safety needs. Um, you've got to feel secure. So having gotten through the first level of physical needs now, Again, am I safe in the job that I'm doing? Is the equipment safe? You know, are the terminals safe? Um, are the customers that I go to, have they been talked to, to by sales? Uh, you know, are they safe? Can I park, park my truck there if I have a layover? All these types of things go into uh, you know, the safety element. And I'm convinced that the families want the, their spouses to work at safe companies. And a lot of companies miss the ball here. We have a lot of great companies with very good safety records, and they don't realize the importance of those safety records when they go out and try to you know, attract new drivers. They don't talk to them, and I've seen it over and over again. Um, if you've got a good safety record, you need to flaunt it. Get it out there. 
Um, it's very important to drivers to work at something that has consistency and safety as uh, you know the backbone of their business. And a lot of that comes through this. And we have teachings about standard operating procedures. Um, but drivers, uh, you know, they benefit from consistency, a reliable process. You know, that resonates down through safety. Um, you know, from the driver's perspective, I suggest to you that SOPs, a driver will take no from a company if they've gone in and asked for something that's a little differentiator from the policy um, that they might have, say, on, uh, you know, time off. Maybe your policy is two weeks. Well, that driver comes in and says, I need a day off next week, and you refuse it. They'll take that if they know the driver coming in behind them is going to hear the same thing. When they have... Uh, some doubt that that's the fact, that's when they start looking around. An SOP, Standard Operating Procedures, uh, is a way to curtail that and make sure that it doesn't happen. It's a way to standardize everything that happens uh, as the company touches the driver. For instance, you know, there's an issue with a paycheck. Um, how do you deal with that? Do you deal with it differently with different drivers? Or do you have a standardized process for that that closes the loop and gets back to that driver? That's the type of thing I'm talking about. Um, structure and stability, you know, and that also allows for training for drivers, um, remedial training, uh, SOPs for that type of thing, um, uh, make it very, very consistent. Uh, and you raise the bar when you, when you uh, bring the training in. The social needs, again, we're, now we're getting back in, in, into the, the motivators. So a lot of companies out there do have physical needs and safety needs nailed, um, but the social needs, um, they fall down right about here. Um, you know, a driver is a driver, and a big truck driver should just pick the load up, deliver it, and be done, come back get another one. Well, you know what? Um, there's social needs. We all have them. And, you know, we believe in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and I, I encourage you to go, uh, you know, search, do some research on your own on this. Um, it's it's factual. It's uh, It plays out. And if you believe that, then, you know, you need a sense of belonging. Um, communication is key to this. I communicate with you because I trust you. If I don't communicate with you, it's because I really don't care. It's because I don't particularly trust you, and why would I share information about myself and my business with you? It's, it's that kind of thinking. So, you know, this is part of the teaching. Again, we get into how you communicate, um, the different ways of communicating, the consistency of communicating, who you communicate with. And, of course, you have customers, you've got suppliers, you've got the community around you, your drivers, your owner-operators, your people in the walls. Um, this is actually a lot of fun for a communications action team when we tell you how to form that through the teachings. But, uh, you know, part of communicating is listening. You know, so we ask for feedback. We do surveys. We've got uh, some TCA vendors that have survey products. Um, but we ask the drivers what's important to them. Who are your favorite sh shippers, your least favorite shippers, your favorite truck stops and least favorite. Why? How do you rate different departments within the business? And we react to that feedback. We get it from them. Then we make changes, typically in three fashions. We either just do it and so you go, well, we didn't know that was upsetting them. So we can change that easily. Or it's an action team because it's going to take a little more effort. Or some things are just intrinsic to the business. We can't change them, but we explain why we can't. But if you've got that type of communication going, then you know, these are motivated. These are giving drivers cause to think before they leap to another company. So, you know, part of uh, everyday lives and each and every one of us likes to be congratulated and, and we want to be recognized for our contribution to the success of the business that we work in. And drivers are no different. Uh, recognition equals respect. And, uh, you know, we all like it. And there are so many of them in the industry that are kind of typical accident-free driving, certainly a years of service. I mean, who doesn't like to see a truck driver walking through a uh, truck stop that says he's been working at the company they're at for five years or six years or 10 years? Um, you know, and there's all kinds of personal activities that go on in businesses, um, you know, in charitable events and sporting events. And somebody got a new truck. Somebody had a child. Somebody had a grandchild. All those things are reasons to celebrate. And the thing that you're doing here is you're feeding, you're feeding positive vibes every way that you possibly can. So I've been saying for years that if you've got two people in a company, you've got a rumor mill. But, but if you fill that rumor mill full of the positives that happen every day in your business, you know what? That has an effect and it has a dramatic effect. People start feeling better about where they work. 
And uh, it's all, you know, again, these are the types of things that uh, we celebrate. Um, we also had a lot of celebration around this one. Once we got to this point, 52% of the drivers that came into our business actually were recruited by our own drivers. Now, we just didn't offer money out to them and say, hey, go recruit. We had programs for it. So we had conversational sales that we put the drivers through. We told them what we wanted them to talk about, and we paid them immediately. We have a whole program now around this in, in our teachings. Um, but uh, we, uh, we really relied on our people, and they knew what we wanted, and they didn't bring us a lot of junk. We got good quality candidates came to our place, and uh, it was a very successful program. Um, you know, the last level of this is self-actualization. And, you know, I, I have a... I've always felt there's three types of drivers in the industry. There's what I call the uh, lost and forlorn, which are the drivers that are out there that are just driving truck until they figure out what they really want to do with their lives. And quite often they don't figure that out. They spend their whole lives driving a truck and they kind of look like they're into it, but not really. Um, then you've got the truck stop cowboy. And in my day, that meant, uh, you know, an owner operator or, or a small company truck would go by with, uh, you know, hundreds of lights on it and chrome everywhere and all the rest of it. You know, you like looking at that stuff, but you've got to wonder about the ROI. Uh, and then there's a professional. The professional is the individual who would succeed no matter where and in what sector of the economy they're in. They'll just do the best that they can do. That's their makeup. And they're the ones that you want. Um, but you have to foster that. Because I know right now, everybody's listening to this. If I was to ask you which one of those three that I just described would you want, you'd say the professional. Okay, then my response to that is, what do you do to foster that? How do you help that individual be as good as they are? Well, there's a number of ways of doing it. You know, you can offer educational uh, um, avenues for them. Uh, so much good stuff on uh, online now. Um, you know, advanced defensive driving, conversational sales, as I said before, um, there's just a myriad of things. Um, you can provide them information on uh, FMCSA and proposed rulemakings that are coming out. What about the new equipment that's coming out? What about offering or asking their opinion on what you should reorder uh, on your asset rotation? And what, uh, what would they enjoy and uh, help them do their job better as an option on the truck? There's all these things that you're asking for feedback from that show that you uh, do respect that they have opinions and they want to share them. And, you know, the other thing that we did was we posted all our jobs to our drivers. Now we have a system again in the training for this because you've got to have a qualification, uh, minimum uh, requirements for each of the levels, but we would never go outside our walls and outside our drivers and owner offers before we offered a job that was available inside our walls uh, to anyone else. And, I'm convinced and I know for a fact that most of them were not interested in those jobs. Some of them were. I mean, look at any company out there, including the one I ran. I mean, I, I built for 10 years when my kids came along and uh, I wanted to watch them grow up. Uh, my dad was a driver and he was gone, uh, you know, he was gone pretty early in his life and I didn't know him that well. So that was my motivation. These people are motivated that way too, or for other issues. And, uh, you know, many of them don't want to come in that office but the fact that you're offering out them shows respect shows that you uh you do value you know the knowledge that they've gained and what they might contribute to the success of your business so all these things are uh, are huge and you know tuition reimbursement's an easy one just go and graduate the course and has anything to do with what we're uh, what we're doing here in this industry then we're going to pay for it there's all kinds of studies out there. I ask you, you know, to go and look at them and educate the workforce is a more efficient workforce. Uh, you know, a, a, a workforce that communicates effectively is a more effective workforce and greater ROIs to the company that they work at. Um, so at any rate, here, here's, again, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and you can kind of figure out where you might be on this. Pyramid. You've probably touched at various levels, but as far as a concentrated effort directly tied to retention, I doubt many of you have done that. And, you know, looking at it from the 50,000 foot view, uh, people stay in situations where they like and they need the ones they don't. So maybe we know why. Um, there's no quick fix and uh, there's no shortcuts. Um, you're in the situation that you're in right now at the company you're at because you put yourself there. 
Uh, you're in the relationship with your spouse or significant other or your friends because you are comfortable with that. Um, you're in the neighborhood you live in because you're comfortable with that. So if they're leaving your business, you're not comfortable there. Let's make them comfortable. So if that in and of itself doesn't attract you to this, then, you know, here's the obvious one, which is just the numbers to hire. We went from hiring 360 trucks a year to 60. And at the end of the day, that was a, you know, just under $2 million that it saved us in that cost alone. But that really is not where the money was. The money was in each of the different departments um, that we, uh, we ran sales operations, uh, maintenance, administration, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, safety. Once we get brought in the SOP process and we took out what I call all the rub points for these things, all the uh, things that really bogged us down and created bottlenecks, we started seeing great efficiencies. You know, safety had fewer accidents. Uh, obviously, insurance premiums went down. Uh, when we started TCA Engage in the benchmarking program, one of the first things we were asked for um, by uh, members, subscription members, was to uh, measure age accounts receivable. And we found that kind of enlightening. But we, there's a correlation between turnover and age accounts receivable, the time cost of money. When people are in your business and they're used to the paperwork flow and how they've got to be a cooperative um, and compliant to policies within the business, you become much better. Your invoices get out quicker, all the rest of those types of things. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a cost that you save. Um, sales, less service failures, less time mending fences, uh, probably able to go after more detailed and service oriented uh, type uh, shippers. To me, that means higher quality of revenue, more revenue per mile, operations. Uh, turning over 20% of a workforce on a dispatch board compared to 120% allows that dispatcher time to work on the KPIs, whether they be empty miles, whether they be revenue per mile, um, whatever those are, obviously not training people all the time allows them to do uh, you know, their jobs better. Maybe it takes on more trucks on that board. Maintenance, uh, certainly a big part of our training is not finding bad guys. None of this is finding bad about finding bad guys. And certainly it's never more relevant than on this one. Um, when, you know, equipment is dropped at a drop yard or in a yard, uh, you know, the deficiencies have to be reported. So the next driver doesn't pick that trailer up and have two flat tires and a bunch of the lights out. Um, but uh, again, we're not looking for bad guys. We're looking for, uh, we're, we're looking for solutions and to help the company get better. And maintenance is uh, certainly uh, a key one. Uh, I tell uh, this story. I know companies that have very low turnover, and when their assets come off for rotation to be uh, go out to the used truck market, they're worth far more than a company that has had 120, 130, 140% that may have had six, seven, eight drivers in the life cycle of that truck. It just makes sense, right? I don't want to spend too much time on this. We all know it. Uh, minimum entry land, uh, maybe, excuse me, minimum. Entry level driver training standards come out in 2019. That's going to tighten things up. Um, we've got an average age of 56, uh, obviously premature mortality rates. Uh, and there's only really one way to get on top of this, and that's to keep the ones you've got because you're hiring way more than you need. You just don't keep them. So, and I go back to the old adage again no one wants to go to work and fail and go home and talk to their family about uh, disruption in cash flow and disrupt, disruption in their lives. So, we stay in situations we like and we leave the ones we don't. Um, you gotta build a sense of community. No single thing can bring about such a change um, without concentrations. You gotta involve everyone, especially the drivers. You start with a solid base of commitment. You work the plan, the course, and the steps, and the uh, pyramid principles. You reap the benefits. Um, here's the offerings we have. Uh, one's a self-directed course that can be purchased through TCA. And it comes with a lot of uh, very detailed and granular instruction book and a number of videos that you watch on a regular basis in a coordinated system. And uh, then uh, we have uh, some coaching calls that go along with that. Second offering is strictly consulting. We go in and we talk to your senior management team, get a feel of what's going on, talk to your people, and then uh, assess that information and do a, a strategy session. Uh, specifically designed to address the uh, retention issue within your business. So 
I want to thank you for your time. I hope uh, you've, again, gained a, a paradigm that you didn't have on driver retention before and that you might be interested in talking about what we have to offer. So have a great day and hope to talk to you soon.